Last year's American League Championship Series started in Houston, where the Astros took the first two games, including one in walk-off fashion. When the series moved back to the Bronx, the Yankees pushed back. Running ahead of schedule in what was supposed to be a rebuilding year, the Yankees won three straight games, moving to the brink of a World Series. But once they made their way back to the Lone Star State, Houston reclaimed control. Despite their best efforts, the Yankees were shut down over the final two games as the Astros headed to the Fall Classic, which they won. Now Houston is the hunted, and the Yankees are eager to show that they are ready to knock the Astros off their perch. Last night, Gary Sanchez launched one 447 feet. Good for a two-run home run. Gave the Yankees a lead, a lead they held onto to sweep the Angels in a three-game set and extend their winning streak to nine straight. Made the trip shorter to Houston, where tonight they will meet the defending world champions. It's time for baseball as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Houston Astros in the first game of a four-game set from Minute Maid Park here in Houston, Texas. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with John Flaherty and David Cohn. I'm Michael Kay, nine in a row. Before we even talk about anything else, let's look at how the nine in a row has broken down. The numbers behind the streak. 7.1 runs per game. They're hitting 271. They have power, hitting with runners in scoring position. Also, an ERA of 1.76. We'll start with you, John. The offense has really been clicking. And this is what the Yankees envisioned during the offseason that this lineup was going to produce like they have been over the last nine games. If you think about it, they're getting production in the middle with Didi Gregorius. Stanton is swinging better. Judge has been good early on. And then you get the youngsters down at the bottom. And Duhar shows up. It's a really long, deep lineup right now. All right, David, let's not forget about the pitching because it has been on point. Well, yeah, you're all in the same boat, right? If the offense clicks, it takes pressure off the pitching. Now, the, Sabathia was as good as he's ever been last night. At least the new, uh, the new form of Sabathia, the finesse Sabathia, and of course Tanaka. The last piece of the puzzle is Sonny Gray going tonight. He needs to follow suit. The Yankees getting him a few runs certainly would help. You know, maybe ten runs in the first two innings. I, I think that would be what the doctor ordered for Sonny Gray right now. Well, let's take a look at the pitching matchup in this one. It's brought to you by People's United Bank NA. David mentioned Sonny Gray gets start for the Yankees and. And Charlie Morton for the Astros. Boy, he's turned it around in his career. 3-0 with a 1.86 ERA. He has been phenomenal. We start with you, John. What about Sonny Gray? What does he have to do to be successful? You know what, Michael? For me, it's a mindset. He's got to be more aggressive. You can't walk five guys like he did against the Twins and four and two-thirds innings and think you're going to give yourself a legitimate chance to win the ball game. Pound the strike zone, get strike one. His stuff is so good, he doesn't seem to believe it right now. All right, tough Astro lineup, and one of the guys he has to deal with is the MVP, Jose Altuve. Well, Jose Altuve does so many things to help his team win ball games, including added power. You wouldn't think a little guy like that of that stature would have the pop in his bat that he has, but indeed he does. And not only on the offensive end, he runs the base as well. He plays defense. He does everything across the board to help his team win ball games. I'll give you some numbers to back that up. 351 average, second in the big leagues behind Manny Machado. Two home runs, 15 runs batted in, and he has scored 16 runs. He is something else. That's a tall task, obviously, for Sonny Gray. David Cohn's going to run downstairs now, and Meredith Morocco is going to question him on what Sonny has to do to make it work tonight in Houston.
we know Sonny Gray has a tremendous amount of talent, but why hasn't it translated? Well, sometimes it's the simplest things, you know, it's just about throwing strike one. You know, the numbers kind of jump off the page at you when you talk about the difference between batting average against him when he throws strike one as opposed to ball one. And to me, also, it comes down to breaking balls. He's kind of gotten caught between his curveball and his slider. And sometimes when that happened to me, you lose the feel of both of them, and then you can't throw them for strikes. So for me, the key for him is establishing that breaking ball, one or the other, either a curve or a slider, for a strike to keep the hitters honest. Austin Romine back behind the plate. They seem to work a little better together. Why do you think there's more comfort there with Romine behind the plate? Well, I think it's a timing and a rhythm issue, uh, you know, and that's not to, to, to be demeaning to Gary Sanchez. I think it's just a matter of maybe sometimes you're on the same page with a certain catcher, especially when you shake off signs. A lot of times, you know, you don't get disrupted with your rhythm, and uh, maybe there's a confidence level there, too, in terms of who, what fingers you're putting down. Are you calling the right signs so I don't have to think? And for Sonny Gray, I think that's probably a good formula right now is don't think on the mound, just trust your catcher, go with what the signs are unless you have a certain feel for a certain pitch. But... Just uh, take as much off your mind as you can and just concentrate on execution. Well, David, I know you have to get back up to the booth. He'll join John Flaherty and Michael Kay. First pitch coming your way after the break. to learn more by planet fitness the world judges we don't be free and by Shoprite, we're all about food we're all about savings we're all about you well it's a nice enough day here in houston that uh, the roof is open here at minute maid park which is rare at this ballpark but that's the way they're going to play it tonight the astros have taken the field so we'll take a look at the yankees starting lineup that's going to face charlie morton and it's brought to you by Lexus. Brett Gordon is in left field leading off, batting second, the shortstop, D.D. Gregorius. John Carlos Stanton in right field will hit third. Gary Sanchez will D.H. He's going to clean up. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Aaron Hicks. Miguel and Duhar, the third baseman, bats sixth. Batting seventh, playing first base, Neil Walker. Labor Torres at second base, bats eighth. Batting ninth and catching, Austin Romine. Aaron Judge has the game off. Manager Aaron Boone sending that lineup out against Charlie Morton, finishing up his warm-up tosses, and he's off to a very good start this year, 3-0 with a 1.86 ERA. We're going to check out our pitcher scanner report brought to you by your Tri-Honda dealers. What a job he has done here in Houston. 30 Houston starts. He is 17-7 with a 3.33 ERA, and he really loves pitching here at Minute Maid Park. 13-3 with a 2.97 ERA, and a big difference why he's throwing the ball so well in Houston, he's dominant against left-handed hitting. 175 batting average against left-handed hitting last year and into this year. Big reason why that big curveball. Astros are 19 and 10. The Yankees are 18 and 9. And the Yankees have won nine in a row, going for a perfect 10. Gardner's ready. Morton's ready. Let's do it here in Houston. And the first pitch is inside, and we are underway. John Tumpain is the home plate ump. Mark Wagner, the crew chief at first, Alfonso Marquez at second, and Jim Reynolds is over at third. 
Ground ball to second. Altuve, one away. Let's check out the Astros defense presented by Geico. And it's a good defense. They have not made an error in their last 10 games. Gonzalez, Springer, and Reddick left to right in the outfield. In the infield, Bregman, Correa, Altuve, and Guriel. That's third to first. Former Yankee Brian McCann behind the plate. Charlie Morton is on the mound. Here is D.D. Gregorius. He is the American League Player of the Week, hitting 357 during that week, 10 for 28. And there's a strike. First time he's won that weekly award in his career. Fly ball the other way. And it's a foul ball, bounces into the seats. I mentioned that batting average against left-handers, 175 from last year and this year. And we just got a good look at that first breaking ball. What well, Morton will do, he'll throw a good fastball, about 96 to 98 elevated. He's got a good sinker, and he relies on that curveball quite a bit. Strike three, Gregorius down looking. More like a slurve, huh? came out of the dugout yeah. you know back door clearly got the plate this is what it looks at if it looks like if you're a hitter it's coming at you this ball's going to be outside right that's outside no it's not here's Giancarlo Stanton against Morton now there's been a change in Morton from when he was a pirate to an Astro the Pirates wanted him to pitch to contact Try to get ground balls. The Astros want him to strike people out, make them swing and miss. And he has also found two or three miles on his fastball. Well, you, you find that by cross-seaming the ball, right? I mean, he's throwing a lot more four-seamers as well and up in the zone, and he moved all the way on the extreme first side base of the rubber there, as you can see, because he throws slightly across his body. See there, that's a four-seamer at 99 miles an hour, and that's one of the wrinkles that uh, he learned coming over here with Houston, Brett Strom, the pitching coach. That graphic tells the story as well since he's been an Astro. Swing and a miss, Stanton. Down on strikes, Yankees go down in order, one, two, three against Morton. Yankees nothing, and the Astros coming to bat. Astros 19 and 10 lead off their center fielder, George Springer. Jose Altuve at second base, bat second, hitting third, the shortstop, Carlos Correa. Yuli Guriel at first base cleans up. Number five hitter, right fielder, Josh Reddick. Alex Bregman at third base will bat six, batting seventh, the left fielder, Marwin Gonzalez. Brian McCann will catch, will bat eighth, and batting ninth, the DH, Evan Gaddis. Well, that Astro lineup going to go to work against Sonny Gray really has been the weak spot in the rotation for the Yankees. He'll get the ball tonight trying to get back on track. It'll be a sixth start 
and the ERA over seven. And our pitcher scanner report, obviously a lot of room for improvement brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Five walks and four and two thirds last time, that has to improve. And when you think about nine Astro starts during the regular season, a four and three record with a 3.09 ERA. And if Sonny Gray needs some positive thoughts, think back to the ALCS game four last year. Five innings pitch, one earned run against this Houston club. And just one hit in those five innings. Foul back. Well, we showed you uh, when we gave you the lineup. Springer, although he hasn't been doing it that long, has 21 career leadoff home runs. Ground ball up the middle and through for base hit. Let's check out the Yankees defense presented by Geico. In the outfield, Gardner, Hicks, and Stanton. That's left to right. Infield, and Duhar, Gregorius, Torres, and Walker. Third to first. Romine behind the plate. Gray's on the mound. And Gray will face Jose Altuve, who has 11 hits and 30 at bats against Gray. Balk. And Gray balks. Now, I was just thinking, David, with Sonny Gray struggling, right? He makes a good pitch to Springer. Rolls it up the middle for a base hit. You're probably thinking, here we go again. And then we'll take a look at the balk. Yep. Yeah, and that's a rule book interpretation of yep. a balk. You know, and that's another rule that I think needs to be revisited because that little twitch right there is technically a balk. Altuve chases a high fastball. Which is kind of ridiculous if, if you think about it, but... I digress. I don't need another <laughs> rant. I don't want to rant this early in the game. But yes, the balk rule needs to be revisited. Sky the other way. Stanton gives it a look in the seats. Stanton really make a couple of great plays on this recent nine-game winning streak in left field. A couple of four-star catches. Back in right field tonight, very familiar. Ground ball is short. Springer advances to third. Altuve's out at first, one away. Altuve with some uncomfortable swings, but gets the job done. A ground ball up the middle, right at Didi. Advances Springer to third base. The one thing about this Houston team, the pitching has been fantastic, but the lineup is a little bit unpredictable. They might sco score 10 runs one night, Shut out the next, but in a good position here for Correa. Yankees bring the infield in, runner at third, one man out in the first inning. And a strike from Gray. This is Aaron Boone basically saying Charlie Morton looks like he's locked in tonight and we just can't give you a run. Yeah, this is full bore too, full Monty all the way in, yep. cut down the run. Oh and two. The early early read on the home plate umpires. He likes to raise that right hand on both sides of the plate. So if you're pitching tonight, you're liking what you're seeing so far. Well, Correa has been a Yankee killer in his career, as you saw with those numbers. Yankees trying to shut him down right here in the first inning. Ground it to Didi. A run will score. They get the out at first. One nothing Astros. You know, I know he just gave up a run, but Sonny Gray in this first inning kind of looks nastier, right? I mean, a couple of very uncomfortable swings. He's gotten ahead in the count. 
And, and it shows you how good he can be if he just gets ahead in the count. A nasty slider down and away. Good job by Correa just to put it in play. Yeah, high quality breaking stuff so far. Here's Guriel. And a strike. just ended a streak of nine straight strikes from Sonny Gray. One and two. Love those kind of swings I'm on the mound, Flash. <laughs> Good movement, just ate him up. Line into right field. Stanton will make the play for the final out. One run, one hit, and nobody left on base. We've played one in Houston. Astros won, Yankees nothing. At the Toyota conversation, what do you think of Cody Bellinger being benched for what Dodgers manager Dave Roberts saw as a lack of hustle? Marcy, NYY618, or Mark NYY618, good for Dave Roberts. Hustle is an important aspect of the game, and it's disrespectful to the team, the manager, and the fans. It's not, or to not hustle. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Camry Hybrid. Keep the conversation going. Here's Gary Sanchez, pitch outside. Did not like that at all, Michael. You know, I'm, I, I got to come on your radio show. I'm in a ranting mood today or something. <laughs> I don't know. Let's book you up for tomorrow. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that move at all by Roberts to pitch, pitch Bellinger on that play. I didn't see it. He went down, dug out a low hook, you know, and kind of got stuck in the box. There's nobody out. You don't want to make the first out at third. Bellinger doesn't have a history of that sort of lack of hustle at all. After the game in the, in the post-game press conference, Bellinger was confused as to why he was taken out of the game. You know, it, Roberts is trying to send a message uh, to me. He sent it to the wrong guy mm -hmm. in the wrong situation on the wrong play. Three and zero to Gary Sanchez. Yeah, he he claimed that I went down and got a curveball, went to one knee. He said I wasn't going to make the third out of the inning at third base. When we're down four nothing. That was his explanation. He's right. There's a strike. Three and one. Sanchez, the 447 foot home run yesterday. The only runs in the game for the Yankees, but a great performance by Sabathia in the bullpen. And the Yankees won two to one to sweep the Angels in three games. Three and two. That pitch tells you everything you need to know about Charlie Morton and his attitude. 3-1. Here's my best fastball down the middle. Sanchez pulls off it a little bit. 
but there's that confidence that I can throw my best fastball in the hitter's count and throw it right by you. If you notice anything about Morton and all of these fastballs, they're all four-seamers. That was 99 again right there on the top end velocity. That's the big change he's made since coming over to the Astros. And you know, Brett Strom, the pitching coach, got him on the track master that they use and the spin rate and what works and what doesn't work. And you know, they got him to throw more four-seamers, and that's when his velocity went up and along with his confidence. I'll tell you what, and you mentioned it before, a little deception stepping towards the Yankee third base dugout, throwing across his body a little bit. The right-handers are bailing a little early. Grounded, just foul. Uh, David, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because pitchers coming over here to the Astros get better, right? Justin Verlander got better after that trade. This guy resurrected his career over here. And they must w explain what that is. They're seeing these angles or the spin rates and all that. Well, the new technology now, it's, it's sort of like a, a launch monitor in golf. And really all the golf technology has come to baseball. And you can now set it up in the bullpen and with your iPad and a, and a couple of cameras. And it can tell you immediate feedback on every pitch you throw and the quality of that pitch. Swing and a miss. Sanchez down on strikes. Along with your arm angle. I was say quality pitch. That was nasty right there. After all those fastballs, a razor blade slider on the black. And here's the motion we were talking about. Kind of steps towards the third base dugout and cross fires back across. I know for a right handed hitter, that cannot feel comfortable. Stays closed a long time, and that's one of the reasons why you'd want to pitch on this side of the rubber when you do throw across your body a little bit. A bunt by Hicks. McCann out, fires to first, they get him. It's a two-way. So Morton threw nine pitches in the first inning to get three outs. He threw eight pitches to Sanchez to get him out, but struck him out. Third strikeout for Morton, two-way here in the second. And that brings up the rookie, Miguel Andujar. If Hicks gets that down, that works. I, I like the idea of him and incorporating, you know, trying to bump for a hit here and there. The idea was right. The execution yeah. didn't, didn't work out, especially with all the shifts nowadays. Breaking ball strike. Remember when I talked about right-handers not feeling real comfortable, and there you see the doubles in the American League. And Duhar, and so that's what's going to happen. McCann setting up away and still gets the call in, probably off the plate a little bit, and we've seen a really wide zone so far. Ground ball up the middle, grabbed there by Correa, fires the first, they get him. And that'll do it in the second as the Yankees go down in order against Morton. We go to the bottom of the second.
He has the kind of stuff that when he's ahead in the count, he, he can have success even against the best of lineups like, like a Houston team that we know is going to be so tough. So um, I think for me it starts with, with strike one, getting ahead in the count. Then he can start to use all his weapons. And when that's the case, um, we feel like he's a dynamic pitcher. John, that's what you said on the open. You have to throw strikes. Well, I think it's a mindset. Good break a ball for a strike there to get ahead. But, you know, sometimes when I watch Sonny Gray, I get frustrated because you see how good the stuff is, but it's like he's nibbling just off the plate. And it's almost like, I hate to compare him to Charlie Morton, but a 3-1 fastball to Gary Sanchez, here it is. I know I can beat you. And I guess, David, maybe when you're going through a tough time, you don't believe that your stuff is as good as it probably is. Absolutely. You are dead on, Flash. I think what the next step beyond that is trusting your catcher. You know, I, we talk about the style of pitching and pitcher and catcher relationships. But for me, it's really about kind of the, the Mark Burley style of pitching. You see that graphic right there. I mean, that jumps off yeah. the page yep. at you. Just a matter of strike one and ball one. And even though that's a small sample size, those numbers are enormous. Reddick with a high pop up on the left side. And Gregorius makes the play one away. You know, the Mark Burley style of pitching that, you know, the you know, Chicago White Sox starting lefty for years was, I want to work as fast as I can. I don't want to think about the pitch. You call it. You tell me where you want it. And I'm going to give it to you as quick as I can. And I'm going to get my team off the field and into the dugout with bats in their hands as quickly as I can. And that, that may serve Sonny Gray well for a while, that sort of a mentality to get him back into an aggressive mode. Here's Bregman, Astros third baseman, sixth batter in the lineup. And a strike. Well, and it, it worked out for Sonny Gray tonight, right? The Yankees playing that late game out in Anaheim. They got into the hotel at whatever time, 4.30 in the morning. So Sanchez gets a half a day as a DH and Romine behind the plate trying to get Sonny Gray right. And Sonny Gray was allowed to travel ahead of the team, so... He was uh, he was at the hotel well before the team, certainly well rested. Joe Torre used to do that with me and Boomer too, Michael, and we got ahead of the team at the hotel. <laughs> I forget about the well rested part at the end. But. The two one. Three and one. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking about Boomer when you were talking about Sonny Gray and Romine. Put a sign down, don't think about it, and just throw it. That's what David Wells did. He would let the catcher call the game. But he had a gift of being able to throw any pitch and any count for a strike. But it just simplified everything for him. Lined right at Walker. Two away. Yeah, Boomer had a great repeatable delivery. And he, you bear in mind, too, this is... Sonny Gray's third start with his revised mechanics, and they are definitely different than what he had been using over the past year and a half or so. His arms are separating, his hands are separating a little further away from his body. He's getting into throwing motion much quicker. And he looks much more comfortable tonight than his previous yeah. two starts. Yep. But credit him for staying with this adjustment. Here's Marwin Gonzalez. Pitch misses outside. 1-0. Astros with a run in the first against Gray. It's 1-0 bottom of the second inning. First of four from Minute Maid Park. High fly ball, left field and deep. On the track is Gardner. He puts it away for the final out of a 1-2-3 inning. We're going to the third here in Houston. It's 1-0 Astros.
Justin Verlander and the Astros in game two of this four game set. Coverage will begin at seven with Audi batting practice today and the Chevy Yankees pregame. Then we'll call all the action right here on Yes and streaming on Fox Sports Go. Jordan Montgomery will face Verlander. Then on Wednesday, Severino against Keuchel. And Thursday afternoon, it's Tanaka against Lance McCullers Jr. All the games will be on the Yes Network. So please join us. Yankees, three up, three down the first two innings. Bottom third of the order, starting with Neil Walker. And there's a strike. Yankees have not had a ball out of the infield. Three ground balls and three strikeouts. Hit sharply on one hop to Altuve, and he gets Walker. Not sure if Altuve caught that low and then dropped it, or if it's short hop, but it's a 4-3 for the first out. One thing Altuve has done, really, with the majority of his throws, is throw it just hard enough to get the runner. You know, and that, that's a gift. Derek Jeter had that. You know, with Sean Dunstan was a great shortstop for the Cubs for years and always had to throw bullets to first base. And something to be said for saving your arm a little bit and just throw it, you know, throw it just hard enough to get the runner out. 0-1 on Glaber Torres. Hitting 310 in the early going of his career. He doesn't know what losing the major leagues is about. Ever since he's been called up, the Yankees have won. Missed outside. You saying he's a good luck charm, Michael? I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. When you have that kind of skill, I guess you're good luck. Got a great way about him, very good demeanor. Respectful of those around him, plays the game hard. Two and two. I was talking to Aaron Boone before the game about Glaber Torres, and he was as surprised as, as I was as, as to how well he moves out there, his range defensively. He's a, he's a shortstop playing second base. He's got an, the arm of a shortstop, but the way he moves and how confident his hands are, I, it really jumped out at me. I didn't realize he was that good of a defender. Nor did Aaron Boone, apparently. He does now. Just 21 years old. One thing that I like about him at the plate is he, he's got this big leg kick, but he gets it out of the way so early, right? It's slow, it's under control. So he always seems like he's puts himself in a good position to hit. And the Yankees have a base runner as Torres works a walk. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. As I told you, oddly, the roof is open. 75 degrees, 64% humidity, wind nine miles per hour, it's cloudy and humid. And as we mentioned, the roof is open. Kind of a dark, foreboding clouds above. But um, they must have radar that says it's going to just blow by. Otherwise, they'd close the place. Here's Roman. Ground ball is short. There's one. And there's two, a 6-4-3 double play. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Yankees still looking for a hit.
Anthony Moore. Brandon Drury, six for 13, two doubles and a ribby in four games with Scranton Wilkes-Barre. Uh, we will not see him in this series against the Astros. They're taking their time with him, and Andujar's good play is allowing them to take their time. Clint Frazier, after that long concussion DL, three for 15, a double. Solo home runs, four games with Tampa. And Greg Bird took on-field batting practice Saturday, so he is certainly moving in the right direction. That's great news on uh, all three, really. Brian McCann will lead off against Sonny Gray. McCann, Gaddis, and Springer. Now, Brian McCann and uh, former Yankee Mark Teixeira could actually be in the, the sequel to Step Brothers because they are now Step Brothers. Brian's mom married Mark Teixeira's dad. So these are things that you get when Michael K does the games, right? Just the, the little behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, the heck with sabermetrics. Let's talk this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> what else you got? Isn't that enough? They're going to be the sequel to Step Brothers. Popped up. Sonny Gray's calling for it. Called off by Gregorius. Not so fast. One away. Watch every out of market regular season game live at home, in the office, or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to watch live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. There he is, the Ryan Express, Nolan Ryan. I guess it's a good thing, Michael, if you, you find a mate that likes to watch baseball as much as you. I mean, that, that probably works. Yeah, I guess, right? Conversely, you know, it might be a problem if it doesn't. Because there's a lot of baseball games if your son's a professional player. Did you get invited to the wedding? No, I did not. Wow, he barked back at me, didn't he? <laughs> like he took offense to that. I'm just happy that they're happy. I didn't have to be there to see it. The 0-2. Still 0-2. Every now and then the Bronx comes out of Michael, you know? You get that edge. Not a bad thing. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Gaddis down on strikes, two away. I was working in the studio with Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry the last time Sonny Gray pitched. You see an elevated fastball right by Gaddis. And I was a little surprised after the game that Sonny was saying, I made progress today. You know, five walks and four and two thirds. But obviously he knew something because the Sonny Gray we've seen early in this game is, is much better than we've seen early on this year. Fouled away. Not nibbling, he's pounding the strike zone. The breaking ball looks better. Rhythm looks better. Springer single, moved to second on a ball, moved to third on a ground out to short by Altuve. And then with the infield in, Correa hit a ground ball where Gregorius had to move to the uh, glove side, and that allowed Springer to score. That's the only run on the board. Right. Two and one. Up the middle, right there, Glaber Torres smoothly fields and fires. Took a hit away from Springer because of the shift. 
So the Astros go down in order one, two, three. We're a third of the way through the game. It is one nothing Astros. Fourth inning coming up. Yankees managerial position. He leaned heavily on AJ Hinch. The two go way back. They were teammates on a Team USA junior squad team, and they played for rival colleges Boone, USC, Hinch, Stanford. And before the game, Boone spoke about the respect he had for Hinch. They've already talked several times this season, calling him a great sounding board. It was clear in the Astros dugout that the respect was mutual. Hinch joked that if he knew that Boone was going to be this good a manager, he might have tried to sabotage him a little bit. He went on to add that there are only 30 of these jobs. He's got one. Hinch has one. There's always going to be a brotherhood. But guys, you wonder if that brotherhood takes a little vacation over the next four games. Well, A.J. Hinch certainly did a good job. This is his second try at managing. And uh, he said in his first try he wasn't himself. He said this time I'm, I'm just being myself and it's worked out. And he's got a world championship under his belt. He pushed all the right buttons in last year's postseason, especially the World Series, when he deviated from the norm and almost went piggyback start style and rearranged his whole bullpen when they struggled. And so it's not just about analytics with Houston. He he has a feel for people, and he also has eyes on the ground, boots on the ground, so to speak, in terms of you know, making decisions on real-time information with your eyes. Gardner down looking. And he does not like the call on the breaking ball. Well, David, you mentioned at home plate umpire John Tumpain, a big strike zone, a pitcher strike zone early in this one. He's not afraid to raise that right arm. In this case, a punch out. And that was, you know, the, the, the way you describe a pitch like that, did he catch the upper right hand part of the zone? Yeah, on the K zone it did. You know, it, technically it was a strike, kind of an ugly strike. Ugly, yeah. But I mean, just from the perspective of a hitter, it, it, there's no way it's a strike, right? I mean, it's way outside and then just clips that outside corner. I mean, pitch cast, you know, I, I, like, I like the box. I do, because yeah. I'm a pitcher and I'm a nerd. So I like, <laughs> I like those sorts of things. I'm a little dorky when it comes to that, but. There was a, you know, Derwood Merrill was a, you know, an old school umpire, and you know, I asked him one time where that pitch was, and he said, I don't know, and something about it I didn't like, you know, and then, you know, it's something about calling balls and strikes, but that was an ugly strike call on Brett Gardner there, even though it did, according to PitchCast, hit the upper right quadrant. Swing and a miss. Gregorius down on strikes. Well, we mentioned it in the scanner report, the curveball, a major weapon against left-handed hitting. Yankees are getting a look at it here, Gardner and now Didi. 
Five strikeouts for Morton, two against DD. It's a great shot right there, Flash, of what you were talking about. Little crossfire, hides the ball a long time. Stanton fouls it back. Owen oh two. Now what's coming? Fastball in. He was jammed. Then he does a dots a fastball away at 97 to quickly get ahead in the count. Owen oh two. McCann wants the breaking ball. Shakes it off to a fastball. Ground ball is short. And the Yankees go down in order one two three. And after four innings, the only base runner they've had is a walk. They are being no hit. Nineteen ninety, David, take it over from here. Well, I only have three words to say. He was out. <laughs> he was safe. I called. I thought I called timeout. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't. <laughs> See, I got the bag. It's not even close. Oops, two runs just scored. Flash. Never lived that down. Anytime I'm thinking, you know, hey, you know, I'm good about myself. All I got to do is break out that video. Right Who is there. your manager? Bud Harrelson at the time. Did you hear about it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Audi scoreboard, 1-0 Astros. I was fined. Almost got taken out of the rotation for that play. It was pretty close. Hmm. Grounded up the middle. And off the glove of a diving Gregorius, a base hit for Altuve. Take a look on Yesmo, brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. And Altuve doesn't barrel it up, but just has enough on it to get it right off of the glove of Didi Gregorius. Another base hit for him. Hitting machine. Baseball has eyes. Hence, C9 ground ball, base hit. Swing and a miss.
anytime you're facing this Houston Astros lineup, this is the one guy you always pick out. You gotta really work to get this guy out. Don't let him beat you if you have a chance. I was here a few years ago doing a game with Ryan Rucco and Correa had just gotten called up. You know, and he was a young kid and you could tell he was kind of feeling his way around, but you saw the talent, what he brought to the table. And then today I'm watching him go through his pregame routine, win a World Series. There's a swagger about him now. There's an air of confidence of a bona fide big league star who hasn't even gotten to the prime of his career. Kind of noticed it with the whole team. Obviously, you win a world championship. You come back the next year. David, you could talk about this. I never had that experience. But there's a almost like, wow, look at these guys now. You know, they're they're feeling it. They know how good they are. They they proved it and looking to try to do it again. Yeah, there's no hangover. No. There's just more hunger. Yes. Three and two. Well, first overall pick by the Astros in 2012, rookie of the year in 2015, all-star in 2017, the starting shortstop on the AL team, and a world champion last year. Hit five home runs in the postseason. And he walked him. Altuve was going, so first and second, nobody out against Gray here in the fourth. The Sky Pride Telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. All right, here we go. If you're Sonny Gray, right? I mean, he's been so good for the first three innings. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. First and second, nobody out. Desperately looking for a ground ball, possibility of a double play. One and oh. Driven to left field, going back is Gardner. He's on the track, he turns and he'll have to play it out the wall. Scoring easily is Altuve. Correa goes to third. Guriel goes to second, it's two nothing Astros. Well, the one thing that's changed here in the fourth inning, Sonny Gray not getting ahead of the hitters. Come a little more predictable, a little aggressive counts for Guriel. And a pretty good slider down and away. You give Uriel some credit, went down and got it, was able to drive it off that wall in left field. It's the opposite of Yankee Stadium. He got porched in left field. Now that is really short out there, and that's a fly ball. Second and third, nobody out. Infield bat. Reddick takes inside. Only Altuve scored on that double, and Correa's at third. As Andujar about even with the bag at third. Everybody else is back. Well, David, you talked about first pitch strikes getting ahead and counts here in the fourth inning, falling behind. I'll give you an example. I mean, you know, make of you make what you will of Statcast, but you know that double that Guriel just hit was 93.4 miles an hour off the bat, a 23% hit probability. The only place that's a hit is here in Houston because of that short wall in left field. It went 349 feet. <laughs> yeah, that's even close to Fenway, tell you the truth. Fenway's a little deeper than this is right there. Pretty close, comparable. And I question that too. 315, I'm not so sure about that. 
two and two. But it's the same dimensions for both sides. But that's something to be contended with here in Houston, without a doubt. That they say that the Fenway, the, the green monster at Fenway has a heartbeat. The pitchers, they hear you feel that heartbeat. Well, here in Houston, it might be a little bit smaller of a heartbeat, but it's there. So three and two on Reddit. Confidence is fleeting. Come out throwing strike, strike one, and then all of a sudden, you get pushed out of the zone just a bit. Grounded to first, they're gonna come home. And they get the out at home as Correa is tagged out. Guriel moves to third. And reaching on the fielder's choice is Reddick, one away. You want this for me, Flash? <laughs> wow. I mean, the game has changed, obviously. The rules at second base and the rules at home plate are can you imagine Pete Rose doing that? This is one of those plays, if you're Austin Romine or back in the day, you know you're going to get lit up here. Good throw by Walker right on the money, but Correa, no slide, nothing. So now the Yankees get a double play. First and third, one man out. And here's Bregman. Yeah, that's a part of the game that that it's changed so much and a part of the game that I miss not that I like getting run over at home plate but when you had a runner at second base who had a reputation for laying a catcher out it played on your mind as he's coming around third and you're trying to execute a play and then on the flip side somebody like Frank Thomas who you know would never take you out those are the things that now have changed with all these rules now just to clarify he had the ball could the runner have run him over Technically, Technically, I believe, yeah. yeah, I believe so. And he certainly could have had a hard slide or even a yep. hook slide, but he almost slowed down to allow a nice little tag on the knee. How about if you're if you're going to slow down that much, maybe even try to get in a rundown, right, so that Reddick could maybe get to second base. But he just tiptoes in. Also, Romine says thank you very much. Ole. Three and zero oh on Bregman. Gonzalez is on deck. I think the word I'm looking for, Flash, is conviction. You know, we, we, we've seen it on both sides. Both pitchers came out with a lot of conviction behind their pitches. Every pitch had a purpose. And all of a sudden, it's kind of become elusive for Sonny Gray on the mound. And he walks him. Bases loaded. One man out. There's Marwin Gonzalez. Well, it's make or break time right now for Sonny Gray. I and mean, we've talked a lot about him in the pregame. Meredith Marakovic talked about him. We've all talked about, you know, he's coming. It's stuff is there. He's getting there. This is make or break time right here. And a, a potential confidence builder or back to square one confidence buster right here. In this at bat at this point in the game. Breaking ball for a strike. Didi is shaded up the middle. It's not a full shift because he is on the shortstop side. A lot of the left side is open. Sure, if you're Austin Romine behind the plate, you're thinking, what pitch can I get here to get a ground ball and try to get out of this inning? Limit the damage. You could sink her down and away, good breaking ball down and away, do it. One and one. It's not exactly the pitch you'd get a ground ball on right there. Fastball up and in, but I don't mind the aggressive attitude. 
standing Gonzalez up. Now you can go back down and away to try to get that ground ball. Good read there. That ball is almost on the plate, and the, Gonzalez's reaction tells you that he's really leaning out over the dish, looking for something away. Strike two. One and two. Good read by Romine. Double up right back in there. Sonny Gray following the lead has got Sonny Gray one pitch from getting out of this. Tell you what, that's a gutsy call. Bases loaded to come in with a guy who's been a little erratic with his control here in the fourth. Got away with it. This will be the 25th pitch of the inning. Bases loaded, one out. A one two. Swing and a miss, got him. A big strikeout for Gray, two outs. Well, excellent sequence, a breaking ball for a strike right there. High quality inside, stood him up, wasn't that far in. Okay, let's come back in there, yes. Got it on the corner, and now you're set up for the slider down for the punch out. Excellent sequence, great execution. It's the highlight reel right there. When you're struggling, go watch those four pitches. He's dominated that at bat. Brian McCann takes a strike. Well, we heard Aaron Boone after Sonny Gray's last start talking about competing. I saw a lot of competing from Sonny Gray. Well, he's seeing a guy right now who's competing with his back against the wall. Bases loaded now with two outs. See if we can finish it up. One and one on McCann. McCann popped a short. That was in the third. Two for 13 on the Astros homestand. See the breakdown by pitches and by innings. 27 pitches in the fourth. He's at 63 overall. Economical in the first three innings. Fly ball right field. Stanton is there, all things considered. Gray wiggles out. One run. Two hits, and the bases are left loaded. Sonny Gray works out of big trouble, gives up one run, but it's 2-0 Astros on the GMC scoreboard as we go to the fifth inning, and the Yankees have yet to got, get a hit against Charlie Morton. Love that. Glove on the hand, Pop Sanson, right? He's ready to go. Yep.
Breaking ball is outside to Sanchez. Sanchez struck out in the second. It was an eight pitch at bat. This was after Morton had worked a nine pitch first inning to retire three batters. The only Yankee base runner walked by Glaber Torres with one out in the third. He keeps getting the call on that breaking ball, one and one. It really gives Sonny Gray a lot of credit last inning getting out of that. And then once again, Michael, you're right. This is, you know, that Derwood Merrill, that ugly strike, right? I mean. Derwood would say that's a Hall of Fame pitch right there when you asked him where that was. Is it the argument always about that one that it wrapped around the plate and it was caught as a strike? Uh, that is the argument exactly Michael I think it's an effective pitch for pitchers because you know you can really get a flinch on a right handed batter and it can set up the next pitch after that start your breaking ball right at him and miss in that like, time he doesn't get the call that's a very effective pitch I think even though he it, it runs the count to three and one at the right time it can be an effective pitch sort of change the eye eyesight of the hitter they used to be up and down at side to side more now. 3-1 and a walk to Sanchez. So the second walk by Morton, second base runner for the Yanks. Well, Charlie Morton has been on top of his game. Five strikeouts already. The big curveball to Gregorius, another one to Stanton. Sanchez, Brett Gardner didn't like the call. Morton got that call in the backdoor break ball and then another one to Didi Gregorius. And here is Aaron Hicks, who tried to bunt his way on in the second, thrown out by McCann. And a strike. You know, this illustrates the depth of the Astros rotation. When you think about Charlie Morton as, what, your fourth or fifth starter? You have Justin Verlander for the full year this year. You have Garrett Cole, who's set a record for strikeouts in the month of April, all time. Oh, yeah, we can get Red Charlie Morton out there as our fifth starter behind Dallas Keuchel. That's why they have the deepest rotation in the big leagues right now. That's why they are the best team in baseball right now. They are the defending champs. Starters and ERA is the first in the big leagues, David. Opponents batting average again first, strikeouts first, and bullpen ERA fifth. Until somebody knocks them off, they are, they are the defending champs. Yankees almost beat him last year and they're looking to beat him this year and very well could but that Astros rotation and the overall depth something to really contend with for all teams this year. And again I'll go back to it but they, they've gained a reputation now once pitchers come here they get better. Ver, Verlander got better Cole you mentioned with all the strikeouts throwing the ball better and then obviously this guy Charlie Morton. Morton got the win in two game sevens in last postseason. Five shutout innings in the start against the Yankees in the ALCS, and then he pitched the last four innings at Dodger Stadium as a reliever in the World Series. So he's the first pitcher to win a sudden death game in an LCS and a World Series back to back. And Hicks down on strikes. That's why I call it a breaking ball. You know, it's sort of a hybrid. A little bit of side to side movement and a little bit of downward tilt. It's kind of a slurvy type breaking ball and call it what you want. And the end of the day, it's just another strikeout. It looked like he took a little something off of that too. Changed the speeds up on it. Hicks way out in front. And Duhar tried to check his swing, he could not. Sanchez at first. Yankees still looking for their first hit. One out here in the fifth. It is two nothing Houston. One and one. 
One thing Andujar has shown is he can hit an inside fastball. If it's if it's anywhere on the plate, he's got some kind of quick bat on those pitches. He might be be the first Yankee to hit a ball to the outfield. Not one Yankees hit a ball to the outfield yet. Just strikeouts and ground balls. One and two. Changeup. 88 mile an hour changeup. It's definitely a, a modern sequence, something that you didn't see a lot back in the day, but a fastball inside and then a changeup inside off of that fastball. See Andahar out in front of it. Yeah, that's really a pitch that you're not going to game plan against. He only throws it about 7% of the time. Outside. Two and two. First guy I ever saw throw a changeup inside was Greg Maddox with a two strike count. And you get so excited seeing it inside with two strikes, thinking he's going to try to jam you, and it just never got there. He swung right over the top. Obviously, a great pitch when it works out, but if you make a mistake with it, it could go a long way. Yeah, the margin for error is very slim, but almost unhittable if you execute properly. Foul back here. Right under the Astros radio booth. Yeah, we're kind of stacked here. Yeah, that even got John and Susan out of their seat over there. Susan jumped right up. It's a gamer. Strike three and Duhar down looking. Seven strikeout for Morton. Well, and Duhar kind of saw everything from Charlie Morton in the last pitch is a dotted fastball, perfect pitch on the outside corner. Not much you could do with that. Well, just a great sequence from Charlie Morton. After all those pitches inside. Both hard and soft to be able to dot that fastball right there. Neil Walker takes outside 1 0. Switch hitter Walker hitting from the left side. They have three infielders on the right side. Just the third baseman Bregman between second and third. Right on the lip of the grass. Drops an off speed pitch and for a strike. You're right, Flash. Definitely changing speeds on that breaking ball at 80 miles an hour there. See Bregman, the third baseman, playing shortstop. One and two. 88 on that breaking ball there. So from 80 to 88 on two different types of breaking stuff. And really, the Astros featuring three shortstops out there on the defensive infield. Swing and a miss. He strikes out three in the inning. He has eight on the game. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left at the end of four and a half. Halfway through, Astros up by two.
We're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. And by People's United Bank, where the technology is as helpful as the people. We'll see Justin Verlander tomorrow, but uh, right now we're seeing Charlie Morton no hit the Yankees through five innings. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning on the GMC scoreboard. The Astros lead 2-0. Evan Gaddis will lead off against Sonny Gray. 2 and 1 There's a strike 2 and 2 So simple, doesn't it, when he just drops a breaking ball in there in a 2-1 count? Yeah, he's been spinning it really well tonight, about 80 miles an hour. Gives him separation. It's one thing I've really noticed since watching Sonny Gray pitch is he doesn't really have a changeup for separation. His changeup's more of a power changeup, more like a two-seam fastball. So the only pitch that he really gets Deviation from his fastball velocity is off of that curveball at about 80 miles an hour. Grounded foul. And if you look at all of those velocities, you know, occasional slider in the mid 80s, but really it's the curveball that averages about 80, and he's thrown a, a couple in this sequence at 80 miles an hour, averages rather at 82. That's the only pitch that you can you can say can get a hitter out in front can disrupt timing. And that's why that makes that pitch so important for him to be able to throw for strikes. Still two and two. After falling behind 2-0, this will be the ninth pitch of the at-bat here. High fly ball, shallow left. Gregory is backing up, Gardner in, and Gardner makes the play for the first out. Well, fans, one week from tomorrow, yes, this critically acclaimed docuseries Homegrown, The Path to Pinstripes is back. Don't miss this real-life behind-the-scenes look at the Scranton Rail Riders and see top prospects like Labor Jores get the call of a lifetime. Catch the return of Homegrown Tuesday, May 8th at 11, only on Yes. One away, here's Springer. Some dramatic music for that show. Sounded like the Walking Dead. There's the strike. Not exactly Game of Thrones. One and one. Labor Torres, so smooth at second base, turns it into an out. 
two away. Remember, he is a shortstop who has transitioned to second. He's got a lot of range and a good arm. Well, a great look at it right there from behind home plate, the range, and then comes up with a no problem. Another look on Yes Mo, brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealer. Mm. If you're a scout watching in the stands, you're like, yeah, I like those actions, right? Very confident, very assured. Here's Altuve. Altuve has two years left on a very team-friendly contract. But uh, in March, they signed him to a five-year extension for $151 million on top of the two years remaining. So he signed through 2024. Not bad for a guy they told to go home from a tryout camp, right? Yeah, you're too short. You can't play this game. Nice try. One and two. Oh, he dives out there, huh? Big leg kick. I like Sonny Gray up in the zone with the four-seamer. That's what Austin Romine was thinking, had that target up. Well, if I'm Aaron Boone, I got to go back to this combination again. We've seen from Sonny Gray and Austin Romine. It's, it's working tonight. Fly ball center field. Hicks makes the play. And Gray works a 1-2-3 inning. We're going to the six. It's 2-0 Astros. Since 1990 that an MLB MVP and the NBA MVP were from the same city. Glaber Torres leads off and he swings and misses. 0 and 1. Since 1990. Mm. I guess uh, our truck is thinking that James Harden will win and will team up with Altuve to do it. Seems like it's Harden's turn, right? Still 0-2. -to. Torres walked in the uh, third inning.
been a common theme tonight for Charlie Morton. 0-2 counts. It's the seventh time it's happened tonight. That's how your pitch count is only 65 in the sixth. One, two. Two and two. Romine's on deck. Now, before last season, Morton's velocity was 92 to 93. Last year, it got up to 96. This year, he's averaging 96.6. We've seen 99 tonight. Now, David, you said it has something to do with a four-seamer. He was quoted as saying, for some reason, I just went out there and tried to throw the ball hard one game. I wound up throwing it harder. I got tired of giving things up to fate. That one is looped and caught by Altuve. Are you buying that at all, David? You just oh, absolutely. decided to throw harder one day? Well, you grip it differently and you throw harder. And, you know, when he was with Pittsburgh, he was encouraged to be to pitch to contact, to throw sinkers. And when you're throwing two seamers constantly, you're manipulating the spin in order to make it move down, and you're sacrificing velocity. And you're trying to aim for the middle of the plate and let your defense work for you. And when you cross seam it, and you change your mechanics and you start extending a little more, then absolutely you're going to gain more velocity. And with that has come confidence. I haven't seen hardly any two seamers tonight or no. sinkers, typical sinkers that he was so known for when he was in the National League with Pittsburgh. He's a power guy now. I mean, these are all four seam fastballs up the ladder, in and out. Well, here's his quote. The way the Astros want me to pitch is a little different. They're not really big into contact. They want more swing and miss. The idea is that if hitters don't put the ball in play, there's less of a chance to get on. And that was 98 miles an hour the last pitch. The fast pitch speed analytics brought to you by Fios by Verizon. He said, when I was in Pittsburgh, it was if you put the ball on the ground, there's less of a chance for it to be hit in a gap or over a fence. I get both. Fly ball down the right field line. And Reddit can't make the play as it goes into the seats. Wall doesn't give much. Yeah, it snuck up on him, looked like. And there it is, the first hit of the game off the bat of Austin Romine. So he gets a single with one out here in the sixth inning. And the crowd gives Morton a hand. Well, you were wondering if he would be able to do it tonight because the stuff has been good enough. You see the crowd giving him a nice round of applause, but great piece of hitting by Austin Romine, who's been using the opposite field to his advantage this year. And that is a fastball down and away. Austin Romine just stays with it. Now Charlie Morton's been on the edges all night long. And of course, it's the nine, ninth hitter in the lineup. And you're right, Flash. Romain has changed his approach yep. a little more this year. Really looking to shoot the ball the other way. And tip your cap if you're on the mound to Romain. Here's Gardner, who's grounded to second and struck out looking. Did not like that third strike call in the fourth inning. You know, the Astros are kind of turning baseball on its ear because Pittsburgh used to be the place where they would turn pitchers around. They had the magic potion. But now you've got Charlie Morton, who last year found it, and they made a trade for Garrett Cole. And what the Astros have asked them to do have turned both of them into monsters, and they came from Pittsburgh. Continuing evolution in the philosophy of the game, driven by old school scouts still. The eye test, but more modern and analytics as well. 
Gardner swings and misses. And he will go down on strikes. Well, Brett's struggling a little bit right now, and you can tell by these swings, completely off balance. Getting that foot down a little bit late and the fastball right by him, but you can see the way he finishes. Doesn't have his good balance right now. Nice three for his last 35, John. And he's now 0 for 12 on this road trip. Here's D.D. Gregorius. Five years ago, Michael, the, you know, even less than 10 years ago, the, the buzzword was ground ball pitchers, two seamers. Keep the ball down, less damage, less home runs. And what they found out was more contact also led to, to more hits. And the value of the four seamer back up in the strike zone and the continued evolution of what umpires are calling strikes now. You know, and, two. and I'm having a flashback of Chin Ming Wong, and I had a conversation with you when he was the ace of the New York Yankees, and you're like, you know what? A little too many, too much contact to be considered a, an ace. Kind of to your point now, Morton throwing harder, a lot more strikeouts. Eliminate that seeing eye single. And to counter what, what we're seeing on the offensive end, too, the three true outcome type players, you know, the, the home run strikeout or walk type players. And the players trying to lift. So four seamers. And harder velocity certainly counters that. The moral to the story is stay tuned. The things, you know, things are continuing to evolve. The styles. Soon, or soon we're going to be back to the Jim Palmer days. Maybe the umpires will bring back the old chest protectors too <laughs> and start calling the ball at the letters. And, up and down strike zones instead of east and west strike zones, and that's the trend. And we'll do our open in Nehru jackets. Everything old is new again. Don't throw anything away. It all comes back in style. 2 nothing. Astros are in the sixth. Runner on first. Austin Romine picks up the Yankees' first hit with one out here in the sixth inning. They've had three base runners, two walks, and the single by Roman. One two count on Gregorius. Two and two. Two and two. So the runner will go three, two, two outs. Pitch. That one is looped into center field. Right there is Altuve. He makes the play, and that'll do it. No runs to hit. One man left. Go to the bottom of the sixth.
MLB MVP and the NBA MVP were from the same city. How about Frank Thomas and Jordan? Did that work? No. Sammy Sosa and Jordan, and Bagwell and Akeem Olajuwon. Akeem the dream. Best turnaround in the game, right? The moves in the post. Underrated great big man. The dream shake. Jeff Bagwell, a teammate of mine in the minor leagues with the Red Sox. It'll be Correa, Guriel, and Reddick against Sonny Gray. Two nothing Astros, bottom of the sixth. No bite on that breaking ball. One and oh. First time I ever met Jeff Bagwell, he got drafted out of the University of Hartford, and I was playing in the Florida State League. And we were having a few sodas playing pool in a local establishment. Grounded foul. And we start talking about he's going to get called up to this Florida State League team. And I said, you know, it's a pitcher's league, big ballparks, all of that. He said, John, I'll hit 300 in that league. I just watched you guys play last night. So I kind of file it away, right? Like, oh, yeah, okay, kid. He hit 309. 309. James Harden taking some time off from the playoffs, watching me. A little ice cream, too. Nice. 309, huh? 309, the rest was history. Sodas? A couple of sodas. Maybe an iced tea or two. There's a base hit. To right field, just inside the line. Playing it out there is Stanton. And Correa will go to second with the leadoff double. Well, sometimes if you're a pitcher, you do everything right and you don't get rewarded for it. We'll look at this pitch. Off the plate, down and away, an excuse me swing from Correa, and he just loops it. Like right the, on the line. Yeah, like the Cyclops in tennis, right? Yeah. Well, I'm really dating myself now. They don't have a Cyclops anymore in tennis. But yeah, that's on the line. Here's Guriel. Grounded foul, 0-1-1. Guriel doubled off the uh, the wall in left field. Drove in a run in the fourth inning. Fly ball to right in the first. Oh and two. We saw Yuli's brother Lourdes Guriel Jr. when the Yankees played the Toronto Blue Jays. Their father, a legendary baseball player in Cuba. The 0-2, swing and a miss, got him. One away, keeps the runner at second. Flash, he's elevated more fastballs to the, tonight than he has all season, really, in his Yankee career, and I love it. Right at the letters, with a little hair on it. That works. Well, obviously the Yankees would love to win this game and extend their winning streak, but. They've seen enough of Sonny Gray tonight to feel much better about where he's going to be progressing this year. Another elevated fastball. Looks like Romine wanted that one down. Count 1-0 and on Reddick. You know, I know as a hitter, you always wanted that one swing where you're like, oh, there it is. Now I'm going to get going. You start feeling good about your game. I'm sure with a pitcher, same type of thing here. Quality outing so far. Loop to left, a long run for Gardner. He's there to make the play. Two outs. Sonny Gray came in averaging under five innings per start so far this year. So this is uncharted territory.
for this year. Quick out here, or he might sniff the seventh. Easier said than done as Alex Bregman's a quality hitter. One and zero. Oh. Bregman lined out to Walker. That was in the second inning and walked in the fourth. Two nothing Astros were in the bottom of the sixth inning. And a trip to the mound by Romine. And a good one in my mind. You know, you get, get six. Okay, now you're down to five. It's an important part for Sonny right here. Falling behind 2 0 here. You got two outs. Your pitch count is coming to the end. Hey, let's regroup here. Push the reboot, reset button. Let's not make a mistake here. Pick up. Who's there? Nobody answering, Flash. The 2-0. Pick up the phone. You never return my phone calls. <laughs> it's the David Cohn method they're dealing with out there. Yes. Got to go to texting. Three and one. Be an interesting pitch right here. Three and one. First base open. Couple of outs. You don't have to give in. Just missed inside. So Bregman walks first and second, two outs. And that's going to bring up Marwin Gonzalez. It's a much more aggressive Sonny Gray tonight, though. Even missing with that fastball in on a 3-1 count. First base open as Larry Rothschild goes out to have a talk. Chasing Shreve up. Can he get ready in time for Brian McCann? Can is on deck with Gonzalez at the plate, first and second. Two men out. And he can now, as Larry's going to push it. Watch how wait, late. he's going to wait, he's going to wait, he's going to make the umpire break it up. Is he coming? Looking over his shoulder. Is he there yet? Hey, guys, let's go. Come on. No, I'm not done yet. What do you think? Remember that video with Lasorda years ago? Yeah. What would you do? What would you do? Here? Good job by Rothschild there to give Shreve more time. And then Romine extends it just a bit. And then you walk back to home plate if you're Romine. You don't, not in a hurry. So first and second, two outs. Two nothing Astros, bottom of the sixth inning. Gonzalez 0 for 2 against Gray. Gray 94 pitches. And a strike. That pitch right there has been a difference maker all night for Sonny Gray, being able to throw that for a strike. 80 miles an hour, drop it in there for a strike. That sets up everything else for him. Even painting it on the outside corner. Owen 2 on Gonzalez. 
Love watching Austin Romine back there. You know, he's nodding. Yes, good pitch. Way to get it in there. You know, as a catcher, when you have Sonny Gray, who's shown so much improvement tonight, you just want him to get through this batter, right? Get into the dugout and feel good about your outing. It means a lot. It means a lot to have a catcher working for you back there like that as well. Astros one for eight with runners in scoring position. Yankees have not had a runner in scoring position. So an 0-2 count on Gonzalez, first and second. Swing and a miss, he got him. So a big strikeout for Gray. The Astros lead two. We're going to the seventh, and Stanton will lead off. Yes, for a simulcast of the hottest sports talk show in New York with opinions, analysis, and an entertaining twist on the latest headlines from around the sports world. That's weekdays at 3 o'clock right here on Yes. And the American League Player of the Week will be on at 3.30 tomorrow. So you want to tune in and see that. D.D. Gregorius. 0-1 on Giancarlo Stanton. 0 oh and 2. Stan is 0 for 2. Struck out and grounded to short. Cadillac scoreboard 2 nothing Astros. Boy, Morton works quickly. That was that's the 10th 0 2 count that he's gotten on Yankee hitters tonight. Still one and two. And also 16 for 21 on first pitch strikes from Morton, as you see Dellen Batanzas getting hot down into Bully. Swing and a miss. Stanton down on strikes. You look at that pitch count, 87 now with one out in the seventh inning, and Morton has thrown 106 pitches this year. There's another quality breaking ball down and away. When we talked about it, the deceptive delivery. I mean, he's tough on lefties, he's tough on righties. Just throwing gas, four seam gas, and a couple of different kinds of breaking balls. Here's Gary Sanchez. One and oh, you know, Michael, I guess we should mention since we since we're all into, you know, what happened on this date today, you know, and <laughs> the day Al Leiter got traded, right? It's Jesse Barfield trade happened on this day. It's a nice interview you had with him on center stage. Thank you. Thank you. 
I didn't really have to say much. <laughs> right. Hi, Al. Chop the third. Bregman gets Sanchez. Two outs here in the seventh. Well, here's the trade. Yankees got Jesse Barfield, and the Blue Jays got Al Leiter. I think made one start for them, and then essentially was out for three years with the shoulder surgeries, all kind of issues. But they hung with him, and he won a world championship with them. Also on this date, in Yankee history in 1923 the Yankees signed 19 year old Lou Gehrig from Columbia University. Well that's a topper. And then strangely in 1939 Gehrig plays on this date in his final game of the 2130. So 16 years after he was signed. Hicks pops it up. Guriel makes the play in foul territory. Yankees go down in order. Time for the seventh inning stretch here in Texas. Two nothing Astros. moment we just spoke about it um, a streak that people thought would never ever be challenged 2130 consecutive games Lou Gehrig played in the final one of those games at Yankee Stadium he was hitless and then he took a seat as he was uh, suffering the effects of ALS and uh, that streak was eventually broken by Cal Ripken Jr. All right so we go to the bottom of the seventh inning and the Yankees are going to make the call to the bullpen. Brought to you by your local Planet Fitness. And Planet Fitness brings you Dellen Batanzas. Batanzas deals low to Brian McCann. Well, the thing that got obscured by Gary Sanchez walk off home run on Thursday against the Twins was the powerful one two three inning that Dellen Patanz has pitched Ended up getting the victory in that game because of it. But he looked great throwing strikes with his curveball and his fastball. Crushed into center field. Going back is Hicks. He's there and he makes the play. One away.
Cadillac scoreboard, 2-0 Houston over the Yanks. Swing and a miss. Two and one on Gaddis. Gaddis 0 for 2 against Gray. Let's put a bow on Gray, guys. Uh, obviously, the Yankee offense has been shut down by Morton, but that's better than a quality start. Two runs in six innings. He looked a lot better than he has all year. High fly ball, left center. Hits there, two outs. You know, you asked me in the open about Sonny Gray, Michael, and I said, to me, it's like a mindset, and it looked like he was a completely different guy tonight being able to pound the strike zone David talked about the breaking ball and the high fastball but it it even looked like a better better rhythm right he was working a little bit quicker a huge step forward for him tonight yeah I thought you know the, the climax of the night for Sonny Gray was in the fourth inning when he got the bases loaded it looked like it was going to get away from him again and he really knuckled down made some good pitches to get out of that bases loaded jam with one out big strikeout in that situation to get to two outs and from that point on, you know, the two goose eggs at the end of his outing, once again, Romine working real hard for him behind the plate. Got him through six innings, so a, a, a real step in the right direction. You know, everybody talked about his last start being a step in the right direction. I was with you, like, I mean, five yeah. walks, and he just, he survived his last start. Yes. This, tonight, was a step in the right direction, and Brad Peacock, who is one of their better relievers, getting going now. Definitely work faster too, Sonny Gray. It looked look like get the sign and throw it. I didn't see him shake his head once all night with Romine back there. Swing and a miss. One, two, three by Dylan Batances. We go to the eighth inning. It's two nothing Astros. for the Astros 0-1 and 0 Yanks. Sonny Gray, six innings, just two runs. Charlie Morton, seven innings, one hit, no runs. 
10 strikeouts. Guriel an RBI double. Altuve one for three with a run scored. And here's Morton to start the eighth. And the ball is fouled back here by Andujar. 0-1. Now how rare is Morton pitching in the eighth inning? Last time he came out the pitch in the eighth inning as a starter was June 10th of 2015. Crowd of 30,061 announced here at Minute Maid Park on this Monday evening. And Duhar checks the swing. And Duhar has grounded to short and struck out looking. Hyundai scoreboard 2-0. Astros lead the Yanks. First game of this four-game set. Yankees have a nine-game winning streak. So they're going to have to rally late to extend that. Aaron Judge did not start, but he has a bat in the dugout. Lumi. Off the end of the bat, slow roller to first. Guriel, one away. You get the feeling the Yankees just hoping maybe for a bloop and a blast, right? Get back in this thing. Morton has not made too many mistakes tonight. Remember, the Yankees have a short bench. They're playing with 24 men. This is the final day of Tyler Austin's suspension. So you got Judge and you have Torres. Getting behind in the count here. Pitch count getting close to 100. Walker in a good hitter's count here, 2 0. Oh. Vensky and Peacock for the Astros. And there's a strike to Walker taking all the way on 3-0. Morton's been behind in the count three of the last four batters. Fly ball left field. Gonzalez will put it away for the second out of the eighth. Manager A.J. Hinch probably going through some matchups. And David, you talked about the combination of old school, what your eyes will tell you. And Michael just mentioned it. Morton behind in the count a whole lot more lately. Pitch count at 101. 106 is the most he's thrown this year in a game. Here's Glaber Torres. That one is ripped down the left field line. It is a base hit off the base of the wall. Torres rounds first. He's going to second. The throw gets away, and he's in there with a two-out double. What's A.J. Hinch going to do? Here he comes. And coming out on deck for the Yankees is Aaron Judge to pinch hit for Roman. So Morton's going to get a nice hand. 102 pitches. He allowed two hits, one by Romine and this double by Torres. And now the Astros turn it over to their bullpen.
quickly he is taken out of the game. And Brad Peacock comes on. And Aaron Judge was coming out of the dugout whether there was a pitching change or not. So he is pinch hitting for Austin Roman. You see what Pe Peacock's done in the 10 games this year. 16 strikeouts in 12 and two third innings. So it'll be Judge against Peacock. And Judge got the scouting report as Peacock was warming up. Peacock deals. 1 0. Judge just given the day off today. Boone said, been looking to get him a day off. So I said, how about today? But now that day off turns into a very important pinch hitting appearance. He's a tying run at the plate. 2 0. Well, that's what I would do if I were Peacock. I'd throw about four of those pitches, and you go ahead and trot on down to first base. Good sliders, but balls just off the plate. I would throw two more of those. Three and zero. Oh. McCann looking into the dugout as if to say, do you want to just pass him? Well, I, I just saw A.J. Hinch tell McCann, be ready, because he's going to be swinging 3-0, obviously, but why wouldn't you just walk him now? Gardner struggling on deck. This is a no-brainer to me. Takes the off-speed pitch for a strike. Three and two. Most of the crowd standing. 3 2 2 outs, eighth inning, Yankees down 2 0. Judge pinch hitting for Romine, Torres at second. He takes off for third, pitches outside, so a stolen base for Torres. Judge will walk, and that'll bring up Gardner. And here comes Hinch with Gardner due up. And he's going to call to the bullpen. So now the time runs at first base. Stick around.
Bad against Brad Peacock. Spits on the slider. Going to get another one just off. Fish ain't biting. Boy, I wish he had that one back. And then a heater. Oh, now he thinks he can get him out. Aaron Judge says, no, I'm not going to swing at that. And the reason Davinsky is in this game, you think, why? Well, you know, a righty for a righty. Peacock throws righty. Davinsky throws right-handed. Well, Davinsky has a changeup that matches up with lefties better. Brad, you know, uh, Brad Peacock, more of a fastball slider pitcher, better against right-handed batters. They have one lefty in the bullpen. That's Tony Sipp. Davinsky has inherited seven runners in scoring position. None of them have scored. So here's Gardner, who is 0 for 3 tonight, 3 for his last 35, and 0 for 12 on the road trip. Line drive, base hit, right field. Torres scores. Judge moves to second. An RBI single for Brett Gardner. Yankees on the board. It's 2-1 Astros. The way Charlie Morton was throwing the baseball field, Brett Gardner, you'll take your chances against anybody else, and he doesn't wait around at all. Aggressive first pitch hacking. Fastball right down Broadway, elevated a little bit. Brett Gardner, who's been struggling, is all over it. And now the pitching coach, Brent Strom, will come out and talk to Davinsky before he faces D.D. Gregorius. Now Ken Giles is up. So the Yankees rallying here in the eighth inning quiet the entire game but a two out double by Torres knocks Morton out of the game they bring in Peacock he ends up walking the pinch hitter Aaron Judge they bring in Davinsky and the first pitch he throws is lined into right field for base hit by Gardner scoring Torres from third and that's where we are 2 1 Astros lead and D.D. Gregorius at the plate Judge the tying run is at second. The go ahead run at first is Gardner. And a strike. Well, he leads the major leagues with 30 runs batted in. I think he's won at least one more. First and second, two outs, one run in, and DD at the plate. And he steps out. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Gregorius strikes out for the third time tonight. But the Yankees score a run. Two hits. Two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's 2-1 Astros.
Wars night. There'll be a special Star Wars theme throughout the night and appearances by some of your favorite Star Wars characters. In addition, the first 40,000 guests in attendance are going to receive a special Aaron Judge Jedi bobblehead. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees clubhouse shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. And may the 4th be with you. So Jonathan Holder comes in for the Yankees. And he is going to um, bat in the number nine spot vacated by Romine because the Yankees lose the DH because Gary Sanchez has to go behind the plate. Hyundai scoreboard 2-1 Astros. And uh, there's a strike to Jose Altuve. And he's going to have to carve through the middle of this Astros order too as well. Tapped out to DD. One away. Yeah, so much for that day off, right? It's Gary Sanchez, let's get in at five in the morning, give your legs a rest. No. Let's tie this thing up and go about 18. <laughs> Here's Correa against Holder. Now if you want to look ahead to the ninth inning, you've got Stanton, Sanchez, and Hicks. And if anybody gets on, Andujar. One and one. Now speaking of off days, as you see Ken Giles continue to warm up, he'll be he'll have the safe situation here. Ninth inning is yeah, Didi Gregorius is due for a day off too. I'd be surprised not to see him get hit get a day off soon. Played in every game. Rounded up the middle and just under the glove of Torres in the center field. Correa picks up his second hit of the night. He's two for three with a walk and an RBI. And here is Guriel. We'll see if Correa is running at some point. He's got two stolen bases on the year, has not been thrown out. But Sanchez, who was the DH the whole game, now behind the plate. Foul back. Remember coming into some games late to catch an inning or so, and you just you don't feel 100% right because you haven't had that pregame to prepare and get your arm loose. And obviously Gary Sanchez an incredibly gifted thrower of the baseball. He's looking at that little cheat sheet on his wristband now trying to figure out pitch selection. Quads a little tight right now. Yeah. Well the emergency catcher is the last player on the Yankee bench. Ronald Torres. And remember, if the Yankees do tie going to extra innings, the pitcher is going to come up, or the pitcher spot will come up in the ninth hole in the lineup. He's always ready. Chopped to short. There's one. And there's two. They turn the double play. 6-4-3 as Holder works a scoreless ninth inning. Coming up for the Yankees in the ninth. John Carlos now.
stream Yankees baseball on Yes using Fox Sports Go, presented by T-Mobile. So Holder holds the Astros in the bottom of the eighth inning, and now it's the ninth inning. The Yankees are down 2-1, to one. they'll have to do it against the closer Ken Giles. He has now allowed no hits, runs, or walks in his last six appearances for the Astros. He did not pitch well in the postseason, kind of lost his closing role, but he will go against Giancarlo Stanton. He's going to have to earn it. The middle of this Yankee order. The left fielder Gonzalez is on the lip of the grass. He, he's guarding against, I'm not quite sure what. It's over his head. It's, it's in the Crawford boxes. Marisnik is in center now. Springer has moved over to right, and that's Reddick in left. Swing and a miss. 0 for 4 for Stanton, three strikeouts. Giles isn't one of those guys that you would consider a lockdown closer, but he's got a good arm. Gets ahead with the fastball. Elevates about 99, and then a nasty slider down and away. Good arm, but he has been known to make some mistakes. Stanton had his pitch, the first one. He missed it. Had a pretty good swing at it. Here's Gary Sanchez. This ballpark has not been kind to the Yankees. Last year in the ALCS in four games, they averaged 0 0.8 runs per game, and they hit 159 as a team. Last five games last year, the Yankees played here. They scored one or no runs in those games. That includes the ALCS. This feels like one of those ALCS games tonight. Well pitched, tight, tense. 1-1. One, 2-1. One. In their nine game winning streak, Yankee offense averaging 7.1 runs per game. Sanchez could not hold up, punches the bat, angry with himself. It's two and two. Visions of grandeur. And that's Gary, I mean, that's, that's where you do, you get caught in between, right? You're trying to guess, get that fastball launch. You got the slider. Two balls, two strikes, one out in the ninth. 2-1, Astros lead. First game of this four-game set. They shift for Sanchez, three infielders on the left side. Marwin Gonzalez has taken over at first. He's the lone Astro on the right side of the infield. Did he check it? Yes, he did. So now the count three and two on Gary Sanchez. Well, you throw that slider two and two, you got to believe he's going to throw it three and two. Just thinking the same thing. And of course, the shift. Altuve on the left field side of second base. Fouls it back. 100 miles an hour. And he's ready for it. That was last night, 447 feet, accounting for the Yankees' only two runs of the game. That was enough as they won that game 2-1. to one. They're trailing here 2-1. to one. Yeah. 
Strike three. 100 miles an hour. Sanchez down looking. Yankees down to their final out. It's been the strike zone all night. All night has been a wide pitcher's strike zone. And on the sequence, a slider down and away. Another one, a good swing, miss. Down with the fastball. Another slider got the check swing. Held up this one. Good swing there at 100 miles an hour. And this is off the plate, just a hair. But all night long, as you see right here, McCann sets up off, just off, on both sides of the plate. That's been a strike tonight. Hicks fouls back 99, back to the screen. It served Charlie Morton very well, that strike zone. And Sonny Gray, for that matter. Very consistent on both sides. But Giles is prouder of his fastball, and I remember him. I remember him throwing a lot more sliders. Good velocity, good location with the heater. Two runs on five hits for the Astros. One run, three hits for the Yankees. Here's the 0-1 to Hicks. Goes off speed, breaking ball, 0-2. So from 100 to 88. Yankees down to their final strike. Michael, you mentioned the Yankees struggling to score runs in this park. A big reason why the best pitching staff in baseball, the Houston Astros. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Giles strikes out the side, and the Astros win 2-1. to one. Now, Charlie Morton was great. Ken Giles closes it out. And the Astros win the first game of this four-game set. It's a really well-played game, well-pitched game. You still felt like the Yankees had a shot. They were one swing away from it. Aaron Judge came off the bench to pinch hit, got a walk. The Yankees did score a run to break out the shutout, but that guy, Ken Giles, was very good tonight. And the Yankees tie a season high. They strike out 14 times in this game. We'll come back. We still have more from Houston, 2-1 Astros.